All right, so let's do some more quantum electrodynamics. This is, again, the electromagnetic version of quantum field theory. And it's nice because there is only one vertex in here. Electron comes in, electron comes out, and a photon. So it's like electron, electron, photon. Um, and again, this, these arrows have to continue through. So we did a few already. Let's try another one here. Let's try electron comes in, electron comes in and electron goes out, electron goes out. I know what you're thinking. You're like, got it. I know how to do this sucker right here, dude. Bada bing, bada boom. Again, no, that's not what I want. This is this is two electrons that didn't scatter. <laughs> they did not collide. So yes, this is possible, but it's not interesting at all. We wanna collide the electrons, have them interact, and then ask what happens. So notice what I cannot do. I can't. I can't do this. I can't run these things together. I can't run these electrons together because look what ha look what would happen. These arrows would run into each other and that's not allowed in quantum electrodynamics. If one of these were a positron, you could do that, an anti-electron, because then the arrow would continue through. You can annihilate an electron with a positron, in other words, like this at a vertex, but you can't annihilate an electron with an electron at a vertex like that. So that's not allowed. So what could we do? Well, we really only have one choice here. I mean, you need to connect these with some sort of photon here. So this has to be a photon. The photon is the particle that mediates the electromagnetic force is the fancy way to say it. Photons are the particle that mediate the electromagnetic force. They're the force transmitters between these particles, photons here. So I could do that, and then what could I do? Well, electron can come out here, like that. So that's okay, this E arrow continues through. How about this E arrow? It has to continue through as well. Now, I can just connect these at this point. Now I'm good. They interacted, and boop, they come on, they pass on through. So this is all curvy and stuff, don't worry about that. Again, don't, don't do not take these Feynman diagrams as literal descriptions of the paths particles are taking through space. These are just a handy way to keep in mind all the ways these particles can interact. So don't worry too much about the path this is taking. We're just keeping track of all the different ways particles can get created or destroyed and interact. So this is the easiest way. This is an electron interacting with another electron, scattering off of each other. They got, they got repelled from each other because opposites attract, but like charges repel. So you have a negative charge, and a negative charge and they would repel each other. And according, according to quantum field theory, the way they do that is they exchanged a virtual photon. This one's virtual because it's not part of our incoming particles and that photon's not part of our outgoing particles, but they exchanged this virtual photon and that's how they repelled each other. Sometimes people make an analogy and they're like, hey, imagine you were on like frictionless ice and you know, you've got some heavy medicine ball or bowling ball and you start passing this ball back and forth between you, as you do that, you're gonna sort of drift away from each other. So sometimes people make an analogy, these electrons are throwing a photon in between each other and as the one throws it, it gets reflected back, you know, forced backward. As this electron throws, catches that photon, it gets bumped backward and they repel each other. And we say that's how they repel. Now it's kind of a crappy analogy. It's not the best analogy because you can also attract via exchanging a photon. If this were a positron here, you can attract, and I'll show you that in a minute. So and it's not the best analogy. How would you throw a ball back, back and forth and attract each other? Well, that just means that quantum field theory is not the same as throwing a ball back and forth, but it's a rough analogy. It's not the best analogy. So this is one possible, this is the simplest possible interaction for electron scattering off electron. We'd see them come in, they'd approach, and we'd be like, wow, they, they bounced off of each other, and the way they did that was exchanging one photon. This is the simplest way, because we only have two vertices right here, so one, two. This is, this is going to be the scattering Feynman diagram that contributes the most to calculating the probability of this event occurring. Uh, so how could you use something else? Like, what other options are there? Here's another one I wanna show you. So one thing I can do is I can send a photon off of this point right here. 
So this photon can come off of here. This is like a radiative correction term here. So, and this is allowed, check it out. I've got electron, electron and a photon and the arrow continues through. So this vertex right here is allowed because electron comes in, electron comes out and a photon comes out. But now look what I could do. This is going to be kind of weird. I can run an electron off of here and then I can just loop it around like this. So electron gets created along with a positron and then comes back in and then I have a photon come back in the other end and I can connect this right here. We need to check, are these things all allowed? They are, look at this vertex, electron, electron, photon, and the arrow continues through. Let's check this one, electron, electron, photon, arrow continues through. Let's check this one, electron, electron, well, technically electron, positron, that's okay. All that matters is the, you have two of them and the arrow continues through and then photon on the other end. So this is allowed. This is another process that contributes to the overall scattering of this electron, electron off of each other. Uh, but it's not gonna be contributing as much. Look at, I got one, two, three, four, five, six vertices. So this is, you know, you can calculate this if you want, but it's not really going to matter that much in finding the scattering probability of this event. But it's kind of interesting because look at this loop. This trips me out. So remember, positrons are like electrons going back in time. In fact, as far as I'm concerned, they are electrons going back in time. So if you were riding on this process in time going to the right, you'd watch this thing and you'd be like, oh, shoot, be like, Virtual photon, now you never observe these, but let's say you could. You had a God's eye view of the universe or something. You'd be like, well, okay, virtual photon turned into an electron and a positron, and then they annihilate it. So you created an electron and a positron, and at this point you'd be like, whoa, there's two virtual particles, a positron and an electron. And then over here you'd be like, oh, they annihilated. Now I just have a virtual photon. But if you think about this in terms of like, you know, positrons going back in time, what really happened is, it's crazy, Electron gets created here and then gets bumped back in time, turns into a positron and births itself. This is just a closed temporal loop right here. So all you have is an electron going forward in time and then that electron going back in time, which to us makes it look weird. We call it a positron. So it's this thing going forward in time and back in time is just stuck here. Like it doesn't extend into the past. It doesn't extend into the future. It births itself and destroys itself. This is a really weird process, but you know that's quantum field theory, so it's kind of cool. You could add these wherever you want. Uh, you so it's like wait, if I when I was a student, I was like wait, does that mean we could just have like a loop right here? You could just keep adding these. You can. It's just you know they contribute less and less and less, and so trying to calculate all these don't really matter that much. So those are a couple of ways you could draw this. I want you all. Try to figure out your own. Try to figure out another way to connect all these in a way that's consistent with the rules of quantum electrodynamics. Let's get rid of that. Uh, so what I wanted to show you is, let me let me go back up here real quick. If you had electron, positron, they can also scatter off of each other. So this is saying photon, photon. Just pretend like this isn't. It. Let's say your outgoing state is electron, positron. So another way these can scatter is they can also exchange. They also can exchange a photon and then you would just have uh, electron moving off this way, positron moving off that way. I've drawn these as if they repelled. Look, they came in together, electron and positron coming together, exchange a virtual photon. It looks like they're repelling. I mean, they're really attracting. This is how a positive attracts a negative. They exchange a virtual photon and they get pulled toward each other due to that process. I've drawn them going away, and most people draw it like this, but they're really heading toward, again, don't consider these Feynman diagrams as literal descriptions of the paths through space. It's just giving you an idea of all the ways that these particles can interact. So let's do two more. This one's crazy, photon, photon. Normally light just travels right through itself. So if you shine a flashlight at another flashlight, it's not like the light bounces off of the other light. So we thought light can't bounce off of light, that light would just travel right through light. That's what we thought until quantum field theory. And then we were like, oh, shoot, you could scatter light off of light. And it's not going to be that likely, but it can happen. So let's see how that could happen. 
So I cannot just connect these two photons. What I'm not allowed to do is just be like, okay, here we go, because that's not an allowed vertex. I'm not allowed any QED vertex where photon, photon. There's gotta only be one photon coming out of a vertex. So that's not allowed. So what could I do? Well, I can connect these. I could connect these with a you know, positron or an electron. That's allowed. And then I'd need another one off of here so, and that arrow has to continue. So the arrow has to go this way, and then it has to go this way, and then that means it has to go this way. So this is allowed. So this vertex here, you know, particle, particle, photon, and the arrow continues. Particle, particle, photon, arrow continues. What could I do now? I could just connect to here, and I could just do a box. And this is the, this is the most likely version of this very unlikely scenario. I call it unlikely because look, I got one, two, three, four vertices. That means this isn't going to contribute nearly as much as one of those two vertice contributions. And this is the best you could do. Like this is the most likely version. So that's why light scattering off light isn't that likely. Because uh, the best shot you have at it isn't even that likely. This is the best you could do. Um, you'd have four vertices. Uh, this would be what positron this would be electron whether this this looks like electron going forward in time this one you know it doesn't really matter how you angle this you can angle a little backward to be positron forward to be an electron in the math it really sums over all the possibilities so it's not like you have to draw a different version if it's angled this way and angled that way if you actually go through the calculation and do the gnarly derivation of the scattering cross-section you sum over all those possibilities anyway so this is the most likely version of light scattering off light. Now, this, this is not likely. I mean, don't go outside and take your flashlights and try to scatter light off of each other. You're probably not going to be able to notice this. If you wanted to measure this, you'd need really high energy photons coming in. And even then, be hard to measure. So, But possible and predicted by quantum field theory, which is cool. This is something we did not think was even possible theoretically. Turns out it is possible theoretically. So what's another you know version of this? Well, you figure it out. Figure out another way to connect these to each other. All right, so let me get rid of that. Let's do one more. This one's kind of weird. Positron comes in, photon comes in, and I want electron, positron, positron to come out. It's like, okay, was well, this possible? Let's find out. Let's uh, connect this here. I'm just gonna connect this to here and connect my photon right there. And if I have photon, positron, that means I need to continue my arrow through. So I'm gonna go like this. I don't wanna go up there. Let me go down here. Boom, like that. And you might be like, okay, well shoot, here we go. Ba boom. And that's true, like this is a positron and that connects right into there. But look, where do these come from? Well, if you're clever, you're like, okay, positron, electron, those can be created from created from an event over here. This arrow continues through. All I need is a photon, and if I have a photon, that can connect right here because positron, positron, photon is allowed. So this is a way you could get this to happen. Is it likely? Not that likely. You got one, two, three, four... Mm -hmm. uh, vertice. Oh, I'm just kidding, dude. That's not a vertice right here. My bad. Even though it's kinked, that's not a vertice. I know because there's no third leg. So you actually just have three. So, eh, more likely than the photon scattering, but still not as likely as an event where you're allowed to have a two vertex scatter. Um, I'm pretty sure there's no two vertex scatter possible here. But, you know, figure out a figure out another version. Figure out another way to connect these. Again, there are infinitely many ways. Some of them are ugly. Some of them are weird. But figure out another way to connect these to each other. So you might be like, well, shoot. Seems like quantum field theory allows everything. Well, quantum field theory allows a lot of things to happen, but it doesn't allow anything to happen. So let's answer this question here. What, what ingoing, outgoing states are possible to connect? Is there any way I can give you an outgoing state that would be impossible to connect to an incoming state? And yes. So if I send in a positron and a photon, and over here, let's say I gave you positron, 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 this is impossible. There's no way to connect this outgoing state to the incoming state via the rules of quantum field theory. And the reason is, look, I, I only had one positive charge over here. My charge over here is plus one. But I got three positive charges over here. The charge over here is plus three. Like, charge is conserved. 
And since charge is conserved, you can't create it or destroy it. So there's no way I could legally connect this final state to this incoming state. Uh, that would be impossible. Uh, that's one rule. There's other rules we'll talk about more later. But one way to notice whether you've been given something impossible is that you know the charge on one end doesn't line up to the charge on the other end. All of these examples you'll notice zero charge coming in, zero charge going out. Uh, negative two going in, negative two going out. So those are all possible, charge is conserved. So quantum field theory allows many things to happen, but it doesn't allow anything to happen. So see if you can figure out alternate ways to connect these ingoing and outgoing states so you can get some practice at, at how particle interactions occur.